We're going to begin with Theresa May, because when a prime minister, when a former prime minister leaves parliament, it is a moment of historical importance. Even if we are living through a period where we've had uh, so many prime ministers that it is genuinely hard to keep count. It's very, well, I wish it was easier to forget Liz Truss, but it is quite easy to forget Liz Truss. When you're going through in your head, what have we had? Have we had five? Because you include David Cameron. Cameron was there in 20. 16. So you include Cameron. Who followed Cameron and then May? May then Johnson and then Sunak. Oh no, Truss. So yes, it is. There's five MPs in eight years. Five PMs, forgive me. In eight years. Absolutely extraordinary to uh, reflect upon what that tells us about the state of the party. And of course, because they're the party of government, it's what it tells us about the state of the country. Chaotic doesn't even come close, does it? And yet still in some polls, the Tories are hitting 20%. So I, I, I also, I mean, you know this by now, I, I suffer from what could be loosely described as the curse of the centrist dad. And by that, I mean that my impulses are always to be nice, always to be kind and always to be compassionate. I try to see the best in people, even when it leaves me humiliated and embarrassed in the cases, for example, of, of Matt Hancock, who I had warm words to say during some elements of, of, of lockdown. How, how wrong can a man be about a politician? Answer, listen to some of my comments about Matt Hancock back in the day. And, and he's not the only one. I, I, this, this, this strain, this psychic strain that I feel whenever we discuss public figures to, to just try to be... Not, I always suffer for... This is why I don't go to events. Have I ever told you this? I didn't even go to the Kebab Awards this year. And uh, the Kebab Awards has always been one of my favourite dates in the calendar. But the organisers always sit me next to, on top table, a senior Tory. And it means that the next time that senior Tory is in the news for, I don't know, um, expecting you to pick up the bill for their libel of 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 an academic, then I I feel my guns are spiked. I sat next to James Cleverly once on the one show sofa. And it meant that the next time James Cleverly was in the news for doing something dodge, I kind of felt a personal... I don't have that ability that some people in my line of work have to, to forget the personal when you wade in on the political. So I always, I always feel that my coverage of politics is polluted somewhat by personality. I think, well, you're, a, I, I, you might be listening. Oh, I don't, I don't have it with everyone. I don't have it with Boris Johnson, although I did for a while. I certainly don't have it with Liz Truss, but I've got it in spades with Theresa May, and I don't understand why. I even tweeted this morning in an attempt to gird my own loins to resist. The Theresa habilitation that I knew would be sweeping the airwaves by 10 o'clock this morning. Everybody everywhere saying, oh, well, you know, she wasn't that bad. Oh, she's not as bad as Boris Johnson. Nobody is as bad as Boris Johnson. There's a line in the film The Holdovers, which I have to tell you is quite, quite beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful film. I only saw it last night. But I'm going to give you a quick trigger warning here. And I'm not making light of anyone who suffers from this condition. But um, but but at the end of it, and I don't want to give you any spoilers. But but at the end of it, the, the sort of anti-hero says to his nemesis, he, he delivers one of the finest insults I've ever heard in my life. But I'm I'm giving you a trigger warning. He says you are penis cancer in human form, and I did find myself thinking just a moment ago. I did, but you can't say Theresa May's all right. She's not as bad as Boris Johnson. It's tempting to say penis cancer's not as bad as Boris Johnson. I did. There is there is an absolute absolute horror show in place if you start saying people aren't that bad because they're not as bad as Boris Johnson. The moral of that story is, of course, that you really must go and see the holdovers. Oh, Sarah, please don't remind me that I was even quite nice about Rishi Sunak when he took over. And do you know why I was quite nice about Rishi Sunak when he took over? Do you know why? Because he wouldn't be as bad as Boris Johnson. Liz Truss, I don't think, I don't think I had anything warm to say about Liz Truss. But if I did, it would be because he wasn't as bad as Boris Johnson. So I think we need to be on guard today. I think we need to be on, t- on our toes. We need to be on tiptoes, don't we? To guard against excessive to reasonabilitation. Excessive to reasonabilitation. But my question for you will be whether or not there is room for some to rehabilitation, whether or not, in fact, comparisons like this are vaguely valid and do deserve a little bit of, 
I don't know what the word would be. Um, recalibration? It is there. Well, and, and and the way we do that is simple. We make it very, very personal. So I'm pretty confident that Theresa May was an awful prime minister. Off the top of my head, I give you the red lines, which were uh, obscene and awful and absurd. The determination to pander to the racists who'd driven Brexit over the line by promising to abolish freedom of movement meant that we had to leave the customs union and the single market and even the sensible Brexiters. Even the sensible Brexiters had told us, the supposedly sensible Brexiters, had told us that the customs union and the single market were categorically not being taken off the table by leaving the European Union. And there we are. And there we are. Um... You also have Windrush, which to me was and remains a, 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 a hideously ugly scar on the, um, on the national record. 11 minutes after 10 is the time. And for the third, for the third one, well, I, I, I don't know really whether you'd go for making Boris Johnson foreign secretary or whether you'd go for the way she treated the police when she was home secretary. You could now throw in the go home vans. You could throw in the response to Grenfell. There's all sorts of things you could cite. What would you cite as a positive, except for the fact that she wasn't as bad as Boris Johnson? I'm not going to mention that condition again, but um, I hope it now resonates and, and I hope it now throbs in the back of everybody's mind as a phrase that you will think of whenever the words not as bad as Boris Johnson is uttered. 12 minutes after 10 is the time. Let's make it personal then. Let's make it personal. I say Theresa May, you say what? And I, I'm outlawing not as bad as Boris Johnson, or indeed not as bad as Liz Truss, or even not as bad as Rishi Sunak. I'm outlawing that. You can't have that today. That's off the table. But I do want to leave the door ajar for vaguely complimentary or positive contributions to the programme. I know it's hard for younger listeners to believe, but when a former Prime Minister leaves Parliament, it is a matter of moment. It is it is a significant event. And usually assembling a sort of political epitaph would be de rigueur. It would be completely normal. It feels weird now, doesn't it? Not least because we've seen one former Prime Minister leave the House of Commons since Theresa May was Prime Minister, one of her successors walk the plank. But I am open to the suggest. I am, I am categorically open to the uh, contention that she wasn't all bad. But I also really want your help today, reminding everybody listening why the, the uh, to reasonabilitation, you can tell I'm pleased with having come up with that word, can't you? Because I'm using it so much. Why, why the to reasonabilitation? It needs to be at the very least challenged and at the most furiously resisted. Okay, so let's get the phone lines open. Theresa May, what did and does she mean to you? 0345 6060 973. Good God, there's so much I'd forgotten. Don't forget, says Sarah, she was the first to fly to America when Trump was elected and was filmed holding his hand. I, I, again, it's, it's, ah, this is awful. Is it, is it a sort of benign misogyny? Is it because she's a woman and I was raised to be respectful of women in a way that I wasn't raised to be respectful of men? Is it because she's a woman that I find myself feeling, uh, I, I call it benign misogyny, benign sexism, sort of protective. So I want to say no one forced her to hold Don. If Donald Trump came to hold your hand and pulling it away would cause a diplomatic incident, would you not leave your hand in Donald Trump's orange paw? I don't know, but again, I'm, you say that, you cite that as an example of reasons not to like her, and I start feeling sorry if that's what we're doing today. We got there in the end. We got there quite early, actually, by my standards. Remind me why I should not be feeling sorry for Theresa May today. Oh, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, it's the cough. It's the blooming cough. Do you remember the cough? Uh, even before the letters started falling off the backdrop, that's when you thought that you were witnessing some sort of supreme meta parody and that they were going to like that the, the, it would be like on saturday night takeaway when the when the celebrity doesn't know he's about to appear i don't know how they do that by the way it was chesney hawks on the last week's or the weeks but how on earth does chesney hawks end up in what he thinks is a safety deposit box room without realizing that he's been brought in backstage at a massive tv studio or theater so that when the walls of the safety deposit box fall down he's on stage with anton deck in in a massive tv studio or theater i honestly don't know but when the when the letters started falling off the wall behind theresa may that's when you honestly thought that 
that you were witnessing some sort of politics meets performance art moment, and it must be deliberate. It can't. It can't have gone this badly, with out it being planned in advance. Was that the same one, the P45 one? So the letters fell off the wall, she couldn't stop coughing, and then a comedian jumped on stage and tried to give her a P45. All in one conference speech. You'd have to be made of butter not to feel sorry for her at that point. And she came on dancing, and you sort of think of your mum's friend, don't you? She came on doing the Abba thing, and you thought, oh, bless you. And then you remember the go-home vans and the hostel. It was Michael Mac. No, it wasn't. It was, oh, I don't know. Was it Michael McIntyre? Not, not Anson Ta Oh, oh, God. These, I'm so confused. Remind me why I shouldn't be. Michael McIntyre, not Anson Deck. I'm sorry. The star of the show show or something. I don't know. It all blurs into one when you're my age. I'll be talking about the generation game next. Remind me why. Remind me why we should not feel sorry for Theresa May. And remind me why her legacy should actually be pungent as opposed to polite. Because the benefit of being followed by the worst three conservative prime ministers, the worst three prime ministers in living memory, Johnson, Truss, Sunak, should not be allowed to overshadow the fact that with the possible exception of David Cameron, she is, she would have been the worst Prime Minister in living memory. So what is it for you? She triggered Article 50, says Owen in Liverpool. She did. This is going to be a long hour. What have I forgotten? What are you going to put on the list?